Most of you probably know this by now, but for the few of you who haven't realized this yet, there are dozens of so-called private chat apps, anonymous chat apps, lay super leet hacker chatting apps out there, but most of them are garbage at best, or government honeypots at worst. Now, one of the more popular cool hacker chat apps is Telegram. It's got over a billion downloads. Now, the way that I see it, there's only one good way to really go about providing privacy to your users, which is to design your app in such a way that no important data is collected by you in the first place, and to have sane defaults that make it harder for users to make a mistake. Because we have to imagine with a user base of, well, probably not a billion people, but maybe approaching that, there's gotta be a lot of noobs out there that are going to be prone to mistakes. And you need to do that so that not if, but when the Fed subpoena you, you can cordially invite them to go suck your balls, kind of like Signal does. Well, okay, they don't actually tell the Feds to go suck their balls when they get subpoenaed, but they give them all they have, which really is not that much. Okay, let's revisit this Signal article, which is the subject of one of my most popular videos. So I know most of you have probably seen this, but this is Signal's actual response to an actual FBI agent um, and this DOJ subpoena that they got asking them for data. And when they ask for data, they ask for everything in the kitchen sink. They're wanting to get IP address information. They're wanting to get first and last names. They're wanting to get all of your chats, images, voice recordings. They're wanting to get your date of birth, your uses history, and so on. But Signal doesn't store any of that crap, okay? Your phone number is really the only personal info that they collect. Uh, chats are end-to-end -end encrypted. Nothing ever hits their servers, at least not in plain text, because it's end-to-end -end encrypted. It's not server-side encrypted. So all that Signal can really give the feds is here in this attachment A, which is uh, the last connection date when you last connected to Signal and the date that your account was created. So it's designed from the ground up to be private. It has good defaults because everything is encrypted, which makes it much harder for noobs to make a mistake. And if you ever doubt the design, then you can just look at the source code for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that Signal is perfect, though. I think that the part about requiring a phone number for account creation, I, I personally don't think that's entirely necessary since Session was able to handle account creation in a way that I think is much more private and anonymous. You basically get an account ID and then you secure that with a password. So no email or phone confirmation is required when signing up to session. And it has the same defaults, the same features as Signal with everything being end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, they also send everything through LokiNet, which, you know, maybe that's a bonus. Uh, the main problem that I have with session is that the message size is a lot smaller. Uh, the maximum size for attachments with session is 10 megabytes, and I think with Signal it's 100. So yeah, 10 is really not enough to send say, for example, several images or a video that's shot with the camera. So I doubt that it's gonna get mainstream adoption anytime soon, which is also very important for a privacy app, by the way. You wanna have a large user base to test the app, to find out any bugs, maybe any security flaws, uh, create more network traffic to help users blend in together, and also just make it a normalized app instead of lay super suspicious hacker app. And you know, a lot more people can also contribute to the project if they know how to code since it's open source. But anyway, the point is being resistant to a subpoena isn't enough. No company can be completely immune to them. And don't think that any executive of any company out there is willing to get arrested to protect you. Even if you're paying them money, I don't care if you're a platinum diamond VIP member of insert privacy company here. If they have data on you, they're going to cough it up. So let's take a look now at Telegram and compare its data collection to Signals. So when you sign up to Telegram, they collect your phone number, okay, same as Signal, but they're also collecting your contacts and they're collecting your IP address. Telegram also only uses end-to-end -end encryption on secret chats. Everything else is going to use server-side encryption. Also, the end-to-end -end encryption method that Telegram uses 
is one that they developed themselves and it isn't widely used in a bunch of other apps and hasn't been tested anywhere near as much as signals which isn't the best idea because cryptography is really, really hard. And if you don't know what you're doing, then it's easy to accidentally put a weakness into your encryption algorithms. And it's also possible to purposefully put a weakness in encryption algorithms as a sort of a backdoor that can be really difficult for other people to find. And if it's not discovered before the algorithm, is widely adopted and a lot of people are using an app or maybe multiple apps that are using it, then that back door could be a very powerful secret weapon to whoever has it. So all of these are reasons to be wary about non-standard encryption algorithms. Now I'm not saying that MT proto uh, protocol is necessarily a sus algorithm because honestly, I'm not smart enough to look at encryption algorithms and tell you for sure. But that's honestly a really small issue. The biggest problem with Telegram is that only the secret chats are end-to-end -end encrypted and I don't even think that that's the main thing people use Telegram for. I think the channels are. Uh, which are only server-side encrypted. And like I said earlier, Telegram is also collecting your contacts and your IP info. So to use it safely, or at least to use it as safe as you would use Signal, uh, you'd have to change your name to Kevin Gates. You'd have to get yourselves two phones, one for your regular shit and then one for Telegram. And you would also have to use Orbot or you would have to, you know, Orbot is to hide your IP with Tor. But I guess maybe you could use a VPN and then you only use secret chats on Telegram so that you have end-to-end -end encryption. Now, how many of the 1 billion plus Telegram users do you think are doing all of that? So let's see from Telegram directly what their position is on data requests. This is under their FAQ. It says, do you process data requests? And to process the data that is not covered by end-to-end -end encryption, because of course, when you're using secret chats, there's really nothing they have to give uh, anybody in the first place. Uh, but Telegram, they use a distributed infrastructure. Ooh, fancy. Cloud chat data is stored in multiple data centers around the globe that are controlled by different legal entities spread across different jurisdictions. The relevant decryption keys are split into parts and are never kept in the same place as the data that they protect. As a result, several court orders from several different jurisdictions are required to force us to give up any data. Thanks to this structure, we can assure that no single government of, or block of like-minded countries can intrude on people's privacies and freedom of expression. Telegram can be forced to give up data only if an issue is grave and universal enough to pass the scrutiny of several different legal systems around the world. So they have to kind of give themselves that little bit of an out there, because obviously it is possible to get this data. And they end with saying that to this day, we have disclosed zero bytes of user data to third parties, including governments, uh, which is a lie. And it's not like this page is archived or something like that. You know, we're right here on their website. I can refresh it. They're telling you that they've disclosed zero bytes of user data to date um, or third parties, including governments to date. But we have this article that was written uh, by uh, Spiegel, I guess, back in March. So this is a um, you know, German uh, news organization. Obviously, this is written in German because it was the German police that have a track record of being able to get user data from Telegram. Here's the same thing from Android headlines. So you know, here they're telling us that these different users and these different cases were related to terrorism and child abuse. Okay, so obviously these are very extreme and horrendous cases, but this should go to show you that all of that crap they were saying about, oh, the keys, they're spread all over the world, multiple governments have to collaborate to compel us to give up any user data. Well, okay, clearly the German police were able to do that, or it was just them asking, and that was enough to get them to comply with it. Uh, but it really doesn't matter because when you're trying to develop OPSEC with feds 
as your threat actor. And when I say feds, I'm not just talking about the FBI or the CIA. It's every department of every government everywhere, or at least the ones that have alliances of some kind or some kind of a common cause. Uh, this is what people are talking about when they mention the 14 eyes. okay? I just say feds because it's shorter and faster. But any data that Telegram or any other app has in any of those countries in the 14 Eyes Alliance, and it's actually bigger than that because there's, uh, you know, collaborators, there, there's extra people that aren't officially in the group, but will still pitch in for special cases. Uh, if the data is on any server, if there's any infrastructure within any of those countries, then it can be subpoenaed and it can be taken over by the local authorities because the feds know that they glow brighter together. So moral of the story, don't do illegal shit on Telegram or at all because illegal stuff is bad because it's against the law. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.